All right, so now we've gotten to a little bit more of an advanced cleaning that we're gonna talk about here. We're gonna talk about different tools, power cleaning, different ends that can go on that you clean with, how to do it. So I'm just gonna talk it generally right now first, and then we're gonna get down there and show you how we, how we actually do it. So generally when we get into cleaning beyond just like tank sensor solution or any of that kind of stuff, and we need to really get up in there and almost like hydro jet wash the inside of the tank, there's some ways you can do it. I mean, obviously there's stuff out there like Rhino Blaster or the Flush King, where this is gonna go up onto your coach like this, where your drain is, and then you're able to put your hose on here, get as much pressure as you can, and with this gate closed and your drain going off into your sewer, this is where you can flush back up into the tank. Now, this coach I have where you can fill it from the top. That's great, but it goes in and it just comes right out I do both in most cases you, that we already talked about when I back flush uh, that is I'll have that run and then you can have this on there at the same time, the hose going up at the same time because the whole point is we're trying to get as much agitation going on there as possible. The other thing is it's going against the flow. When stuff dries in the bottom of your tank, usually it's coming out and it's going towards the exit of the tank and it creates almost like a riverbed flow and that's how it's all set. So even if I turn on my rinse there, it goes in the top of the tank and it just follows the same flow. These give you a little better agitation because it's pushing up against the flow of what's in your tank to help kind of tear it up and get it freed up to be able to come out. So Flush King, um, you can put this on there. It's on your coach like this. Flush it back in there, fill your tank up, pull this, do it again. The other thing that some people do is they'll put a little water meter on here. You know what size tank it is, um, obviously based on the rigs. You put a water meter on here, set it to zero, and then you know when your tank's full. Now obviously on this coach, you got a meter there. Not every coach has that. Maybe you're in a fifth wheel that doesn't have that or an Airstream or something that doesn't have that. Well then maybe you have to have somebody stand inside and tell you when it's full in there or they hear it backing up and, and they're bubbling. But if you put a little water meter here that's cheap from Home Depot or something, you can at least monitor there. So when you're doing this, sometimes you got to do it four, five, six, seven times until it's clear. Um, so this is one way. Now I'm going to talk about another way, and that's where you get into power washing, or I should say these adapters. So an example is this coach happens to have a built-in power washer that is on the coach. There are a bunch of power washer wands and stuff like that, depending on the type of coach you have. If you can get straight into your tank, they make the wands where they're a little bit flexible. You can either use a hose like we talked about here, get in there, go back and forth with the water hose, the pressure on the water hose and clean the tank. There are some that go on the end of a power washer. That's a wand that you can get up in there. Now again, it all depends on your tank. This particular coach is a little harder because of the Ys that go up and then they go off into the different tanks and you kind of get to get it around there. But if I really want to go all out in washing it, then I use these adapters. So these adapters that work on a power hose, they actually go here on the power washer hose and then you turn the power washer on. These go up inside and I'll show you a little picture and we'll roll that in. This is an example of what that looks like. So this goes up inside and it's on a flexible hose that goes up inside your tank and it cleans it all out just like you see here. So it washes backwards and forwards. So you're pushing this up in your tank and we're gonna get down there and do it and then it cleans out. Here's another example of what that looks like. So here's the adapter here, and this goes up into your tank and all this high pressure from the power washer that's built into this coach will clean that tank out. That's about as good as you're gonna get. That's the ultimate way. You wanna do this first, then I go back with this, wash it, full it up, wash it a couple of times, and we'll talk about that. Now you're gonna say, well, how do I get the hose in there and it's still drained? I mean, typically you can use something just like this adapter, and they make this adapter that's a little bit longer and it's clear, and you can cut the same concept that you have here. So you can drill a big hole in here, so this with your power washer hose can get up inside there, and it's just the same concept as this. You've got a hole here that's going in here. You can cut the hole, this will go in there, up into your tank, you pull the hose back and forth, which we're gonna get down there and show you. So you could just go through one of these, the little longer ones, maybe put a rag around it because the reality is, is when it's up on the tank and you're washing it out and the water's flowing out, it's just flowing out down the bottom here. 
So you can have the hole up there as, you, as you're doing this and you're flushing your tank. So this by far, the absolute ultimate way to wash it. And uh, we're gonna go down there and just kind of get it all set up and show you how we actually uh, do that. So let's check that out. All right, so let's get down here and kind of walk through these different processes here. And typically when I do the power wash, I'm doing both the power wash and I'm using the Flush King. So when it comes to the power washing, this coach, obviously, I talked about that we have a built-in power washer here. So this unit will go on here. I'm not going to disconnect it to get water here because we're in the E3 hangar here, the, where the E3 aircraft are. So we're not actually doing it, but this would go on the end of the power washer hose here. And then I have a longer one of these that I drill a hole in so that I can insert the hose all the way up inside, up into the tank. And then you saw the pictures where this pushes backwards and comes out. So that's basically the process I would have. And of course, we'd have a the hose connected here. And then you're just moving the hose in and out, back and forth to get it up inside the tank, clean it out as much as possible so you're not seeing anything else come out of here using the power washer. So that is the ultimate, but then you wanna come right back behind it with your Flush King or your Turbo Wash, and then you've got your hose set up here, and then I got my hose on here, and then I do the same thing. I'll probably do this two or three, maybe four times again to, uh, get that so how do you know when it's clean it's not about what first comes out when you flush this so if you fill this up with water the second part here and then you go turn the water off you pull it you're going to get some black coming out of here and then you're going to see clear water for a while when it stops at the end and it's trickling that's an indication of how clean the tank is at that point so at the end of it if you still see stuff coming out i'm going to close this turn the hose back on i'm going to fill it up i'm going to do it again turn off the hose pull it, you're going to see more black come out. And then at the very end, you want to get it to the point at the very end that it's clear water coming out. Now you know that this is absolutely, totally clean. So another little quick tip that I do, because I like to overthink this a little bit, is I will do the jet wash first. I'll come back and do this hose wash again. Then I'll do the tank sensor cleaning overnight and then flush it the next day. To me, that's the ultimate. Uh, you can't get any better than that. If the tank's dirty and you got black stuff all up inside your tank, your sensor cleaner is trying to do a lot more work trying to get that clean. You might as well have the tank clean first, then the sensor cleaner can actually do a much better job at getting the inside of this tank clean. So that's the process that we do here. Now I will tell you that you can't do some of these processes with a macerator. If you've got a macerator system in here, they're not gonna power wash you. You're not gonna be able to get a hose up through the macerator and stuff like that. You're gonna to have to either take your macerator off and put some adapters on there or something like that. Um, but you just can't do it with a macerator. So this is the foolproof, the ultimate way, like I said, power washer, $20 adapter on the end of the power washer, come back with a hose and a flush king, then do your sensor cleaner. You can't get any better than that. All right, so let's just take a short second and talk about storing your RV. Now, that's not winterization. Big, big difference. And winterization is a huge topic. Um, and even storing your RV, it's gonna be all over the place based on where your location is, you know, you're more prone to mold and mildew in your tanks, uh, how, off, how long are you gonna be storing the RV? Is it stored inside, outside? So we can't really go through every scenario, but I could talk about just some basic things that you can think about, and then you should check with your manufacturer on the best way to store uh, your RV, because some people store the tanks totally dry. Um, some people put some water in, some people fill it. I'm just gonna share my experience and what I do, and then you can check out what works for you and things. Now, we just went through cleaning your tanks and getting them all flushed out and everything out of there. Um, sanitizing, whatever you need to do with your tanks. And then, so I do that if I'm about to store it for a while. I make sure the tanks are out, washed, flushed, and as clean as I possibly can. Um, and then I drain the tanks, of course, that you got a fresh water drain. You have some low point drains here if you need to. This is more for winterization, when you really gotta get the water out and you wanna put some uh, solution in there like antifreeze or things like that so your pipes don't freeze and break. Uh, th that's a whole different segment, but there are things you can do here to totally drain your tanks. And then I store it as I put all fresh water back in my gray and my black and over in my fresh. So that's just me, that's what I do. Um, obviously you don't want it totally no water in it because you don't want all those seals and things to dry out in there. So um, 
you keep some water in there. I keep it full because I don't want inside the tanks. I don't want mold or mildew or anything like that to build up inside from it not being used. So that's how I do it. So again, you got to do a little research on your rig, where you are, where your location is, what environment you're in, how long you're storing it for. Uh, but learn as much as you can from some of the resources we have on the page about how to store it. So let's go on to the next one. All right, everybody. So that's everything you really need to know about your holding tanks, your water system. Now we didn't get into winterization. That's a whole separate course. You want to go check that out over on E3 RVing. But the reality is when it comes to your tank is you really don't have to overthink it. We went through a lot of advanced stuff and some things you can do, but look, use water, use water and don't worry about it. I know that we're all trying to conserve and stuff like that, but the more water you use, the more water's in your tanks, the better off you're going to get. You know, we're going to get into some other things about how much water and things when uh, you're traveling and things like that. We'll do that in the Pro Talk when we have our certified expert come on here and go through that. But pretty much everything we went through is pretty much all you need to know to not have to worry about your tanks. And then also check out PPO Innovations if you are interested in one of those fully automated systems. I know that this is like a headache to a lot of people and it's the one thing that they don't enjoy when it comes to RVing. We get to enjoy so much stuff, this is the one they don't like. If it bothers you that bad, you can get into some of the automated, like the PPO system, or even like this coach with the, the dual switches inside so you never have to come out to dump your tanks and stuff. So there are options out there if dealing with black tanks and gray tanks bother you so much, but other than that, like we said, don't overthink it. Enjoy the journey, use a lot of water, and we'll see you on the next course. Take care.